Hi guys, Al Smith here. Today we're going to talk about the Michaels Q-Bid. The Michaels Q-Bid is a convention that's used to show a two-suited hand. It typically shows two suits with five plus cards in each of the suits. Okay, we're going to use the two, three, four method to determine if it's safe to use the Michael or Michael's Q-Bid. We'll discuss this a little bit more on the next slide. Okay, the version, there are several different versions of the Michael's Q-Bid. The one that I prefer and I recommend is called the Minimax version. And what distinguishes this is that if you've got a two-suited hand with less than or equal to 10 length points or greater than uh, equal to 16 16 length points we're going to use Michaels. If it if you have a B, uh, 11 to 15 length points, which is what we call the gap, you're going to bid those two suits. We'll bid first the higher ranking suit, then the lower ranking suit. What this allows is for you to easily differentiate hands uh, in the three strength categories: less than or equal to 10, 11 to 15, or 16. Plus. The Michaels Qubit is complemented by another convention called the Unusual No Chart. Between these two conventions, it allows you to show two suited hands uh, of any two suit combinations. Okay. Uh, once you finish this lesson, do the Unusual No Chart so you can see how they fit together. Okay. This slide summarizes the two, three, four. The system. Okay. In essence, what it does is allow you to determine what level it's safe for you to bid or for you to force your partner to bid based upon the shape of your hand and vulnerability. I'm not going to review all of this. This is a quick summary. There's another video that summarizes this. So I'll leave it up to you to go back and review that if you're not familiar with this. The Michaels QBID, QBID. It's initiated by Q bidding the suit that the opponents opened. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to show in this column here is what level your two, three, four result needs to be in order to initiate the convention. Okay. If the opponent opened one club or one diamond, by Q bidding the minor suit at the two level, two clubs or two diamonds respectively, it shows five plus hearts and five plus spades. It also indicates that the two, three result, two, three, four result is greater than or equal to two. So this qualifies the two, three, four, qualifies whether your hand is strong enough to initiate the Michaels qubit, and the Michaels qubit shows a particular shape, five plus hearts and five plus spades. If the opener did one heart. Two hearts is a different variation that shows five plus spades and five plus in one of the two minors. Note which minor is unknown. Okay, the convention is structured so that you as the advancer can say, hey partner, what's your minor? Because I hate your major. Okay, now because uh, you may be forcing your partner to ask for the what is the minor you have to be able to be safe at the three level because under this scenario two spades would get the at the two level but three clubs or three diamonds would be at the three level so you want your two three four result to be greater or equal to three with respect to the, 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 the last variation of Michael's is one spade, two spade shows five plus hearts and five plus clubs and or diamonds. Note that in this particular uh, variation of Michael's one spade, two spade, you are automatically forcing the advancer to bid at the three level. So you've got to have a strong enough hand based upon points and shape to be able to, uh, for it to be safe to initiate the convention because the ultimate contract is going to be three clubs, three diamonds, at least three clubs, three diamonds, and or three hearts. Okay. 
And this applies to both the mini and the maxi uh, components of the micro CPU. Now, the initiator may uh, be in a, a director of balance C, and, uh, and the Michaels qubit can occur in any C. Let's take a look at this. We've got one heart, two hearts. It's the direct C being initiated immediately. Okay. Now we've got one heart, pass, pass, two hearts being initiated by the, uh, the, the balancing C. The C can be initiated in by any C. Uh, in the direct of the balance seat. And now we can look that it also can be uh, initiated after your partner has passed. Okay, so it's, there's quite a, quite a few different variations. It's not limited by seat. Okay. The same is true uh, in, 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 in relationship to this last example, one club pass pass. Two clubs are very similar to this first one here. This one is only at the two level. It's safe at the two level because it's indicating both majors. All right, now, the, if, the, if the initiator of the Qubit has previously passed, you know that they do not have a 16 plus point hand. Only, only the mini version of blocks. Okay, because they already denied having an open. And however, you know, what variation is in place dictate the level that it's safe to hit at. Okay, let's take a look at some examples here. Okay, should the overcall bid minus? Remember that the opponent may be okay bid. Now, the first thing that we have to determine here is what's the vulnerability? In this one, we have vulnerable versus vulnerable. So we have equal vulnerability and the opponent's open one club. Let's take a look at our hand. We've got four high card points and two light points. So the six light points, not a very strong hand, but it's a nice shape. So let's determine if it's strong enough based upon the shape and the number of points of being able to initiate the Michael's qubit. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight losers using the ace, king, queen method. That's the one here, two in diamonds, three in hearts, and two in spades, eight. So if we take seven minus eight plus three, three is the V factor, it comes out, and the result is two. Therefore, we are strong enough, based upon the shape and the number of points and the vulnerability to initiate Michaels. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two clubs saying, hey, partner, I've got five plus hearts, five plus spades, pick. All right, let's look at this example here. So basically the same example, but the only thing that's changed is the vulnerability. In this case, we're vulnerable and the opponents are not vulnerable. All right, what changes is the V factor. With equal vulnerability, it's three. With unfavorable vulnerability, it's two. So in this case, the, the, the two, three, four result is only one. Because of the unfavorable vulnerability, we are not strong enough to use the Michaels Q-bid in this situation. So what we're going to do is pass. It's critical to be able to properly quantify your hand and whether it's safe to use a convention in a shape-based hand based upon using the two, three, four method. Okay, let's look at another example here. In this particular example, we have 12 light points. Now, are we going to use, uh, is the hand strong enough to, to, to use my word? Yes. If you yeah, we've got one, we've got, it comes out to uh, the two, three, four result is four, saying it's actually safe for us to bid or force our partner to, uh, to the four level. So this two, three, four is used to qualify the initial bid. After the initial bid, two, three, four is generally not used again. It's only used again if your partner passes. So this is to qualify whether your hand is strong enough based upon shape, points, and vulnerability to make the initial bid. 
Okay, now we're not going to use the Michaels qubit in this situation. Why? Because the number of points are in the gap. The gap is 11 to 15. Therefore, what we're going to do is bid one spade and then bid one uh, bit hearts later. Let's look at the fourth example here. Vulnerable bids is vulnerable, therefore the B factor is going to be equal to three because it's equal vulnerability. All right, now we've got 16 and 14, 14 high card points and two length points. So now what we want to be able to do is show our partner that we have a strong shape based hand with five plus hearts and five plus spades. So what we're going to do, two, three, four, we evaluate this out again, this is four, perfectly safe to bid. We could have intuitively figured that out because we had a strong hand to begin with. So two, three, four is really critical in relationship when you're using the mini version. Uh, at a proportion of two, three, four. But, you know, to, to develop good habits, we're going to apply it to everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to fit two clubs initiating uh, the, uh, bidding the, the Michaels qubit. You know, see here, four, example four versus example one, we're bidding the same thing, but we have tremendously different uh, level of strength between the two hands. Now, what are we going to do? Because we've got a strong hand, we're going to bid again. If we've got the weak hand, we're after our partner makes their selection, we're not going to bid again. So that's how you, you differentiate the mini version, the weak hand, from the maxi version, the strong hand. So it gives you, you can see through these examples, how you can clearly differentiate the hand. It's got 0 to 10 points, 11 to 15 points, or 16 plus points. Let's look at another example here. Okay, in this case, we've got six spades and six diamonds. Okay, and we've got unfavorable vulnerability. You know, we typically would pick up this hand and say, ah, oh, it's, it's great shape, but we're not going to ever be able to bid. Well, let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got three high card points. And we've got four length points. So that's equal to seven length points. I'll have to correct that in the handout. Okay, and we're going to evaluate it using two, three, four. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six losers. So we put it in the formula and we come out and say, aha, it's actually safe to bid to the three level. So we can actually initiate the, the Michael's Cupid by bidding two hearts. Okay. So let's see how important it is, uh, 234 is in determining whether it's safe to, safe to, to, to use the Michael's Cupid. Okay, excuse me for a second. Okay, uh, let's look at example number six. Very similar to the previous example, except we've got one less diamond. We go through the process of, of calculating uh, two, three, four, and this time it comes out to the two level. Okay. Now, typically, you know, we because uh, we might force our partner to bid to the, to the three level, asking what uh, what our minor suit is. You would want to pass. Now, if you're having, if you need a good score, go ahead and bid two hearts, okay, because there's a high probability your partner is going to sign off by bidding two spades. Okay, if you don't pass, you know, so it all comes down to a question of your uh, how refined your bridge judgment is in the situation of where you stand in the match. All right, let's take a look at how the uh, the Q bidder is going to, uh, how the, the advancer is going to respond to various Michael's Q bids. Okay, in the first one here, uh, the uh, uh, opponent opened one club, our partner did two clubs, indicating five hearts and five spades. All right, now, there are some unusual situations. For example, okay, one club 
uh, typically it can show as few, it shows as few as three clubs by the opening. If it's a short club, it can be as few as two. If it's precision, it can be as, it, it can be as few as zero. So, uh, the, the two club Q bid and then a pass by the advancer is a natural bid and it guarantees as many clubs as spades or parts of a spade. Now, okay, this is kind of critical to understand. You want to be able to guarantee as from a, from a known factual standpoint that you have as many or more clubs uh, than the number of hearts and spades. For example, if you've got six plus clubs, or let's say, just say six, you know you can see six. How many, what's the minimum number of clubs your partner can have? Zero. So you know that you're guaranteed to have at least six. So if you've got a single in heart and single in spade and your partner has promised you five, you know that the minimum number that you have is six. So, so if you've got six clubs and you're guaranteed six hearts and spades, okay, because the six zeros uh, distribution shape is split, is better than a five one, you can go ahead and pass the two club bid. Now, that's just the important thing of being able to understand and pick the suit where you can guarantee which suit has the most cards guaranteed minimum number of cards between. All right, so two diamonds, again, is a natural bid. Um, it says, I don't have anything in hearts and spades, but I got a bunch of diamonds. Two hearts is a sign off, two, as is two, two spades. Note that you can have as few as zero points to, to make these bids. The two clubs is a forcing bid. You must bid if there's no intervening bid by the opponents. Okay, and the, the bid of the, the major at the two level is a sign off. Two no trump is a forcing bid. It says, hey partner, it can only occur uh, if you're a non by the advancer, if the advancer is a non-passed hand, says, hey, I've got a big hand also, we might have game, we might even have slam. This is the only way that you can force uh, the, the advancer that can make a forcing bid. Three clubs and three diamonds not used, three hearts and three spades are typically preempted. And they say, hey, I've got four hearts or four spades. I don't, I'm not guaranteeing any points, but I want to get in the face of the opponents and instruct their bid. And three no trump is kind of an unusual bid, but it says, hey, I've got enough points and coverage in the other suits that we should be able to make three no trump. That's a game sign off. So you can see that we've got uh, only one forcing bid to no trump. Okay. Now, it's the same with respect to one diamond, one heart. Okay. Uh, the uh, pass, the, the advancer can pass uh, the, the qubit if they've got a slew of diamonds. Two hearts and two spades is again a sign off to no trump. So the is, is the only forcing bid. So you can see the structure and response system is the same. All right, now let's look at uh, the, the two heart and the two spade Michael's qubit. These are different. Okay, uh, one, when one suit is not known, uh, it takes on a different structure. So we've got the situation where we've got one heart, two hearts, okay, and it comes around to the advancer. What is the advancer going to do? Well, in this case, they're definitely not going to ever pass because the, it's known that the Opener has five plus hearts. So it's a force, two hearts is a forcing bid. Okay. Two, and now the two hearts indicates you've got five plus spades and five plus in an unknown minor. So two spades is a sign off in spades. What do you do if you don't have a 
empty space. Well, you can ask the qubit to tell you what the, what is his minor suit bit to no trouble. And the, the qubitter is then going to bid that minor suit. Okay. Uh, if you have, uh, if you don't care what the minor suit is, you've got a good, uh, you've got a long minor suit of your own, you know, and six plus, you can go ahead and bid it directly. Because, and you're then guaranteed that you've got shortness in both spades and in the, the, the and probably the uh, other minor. So three clubs and three diamonds show a long minor suit. Three hearts is not used. Three spades is still preemptive. No, two spades is a sign off. Okay, three spades becomes preemptive. Uh, right? And if you've got a strong hand, you're going to use two no trump to determine whether you want to proceed the game. Okay, now obviously three no trump is still available uh, as a game sign off. Same is true in if the, the sequence is one spade or two spades. Remember, both of the one, one heart, two hearts, and one spade, two spades, minor suit is unknown. Okay, so to no trump is to ask your partner, what is the minor suit? Let's look at a couple of examples and then see what the answer should be doing here. In this first one, our partner has bid, it, uh, the bidding has been one club, and our partner has bid two clubs, indicating five hearts and five spades. All right, so what do we got? We've got eight distribution points. We get to count distribution points because we know we've got an eight card pit. We've got, we know we have eight hearts and we know we have eight spades. We've got, now we don't know what the overcall has. The overcaller could have zero to 10 points or 16 plus. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pick the, the major suit that we want to bid. With three cards in each one of suit, regardless of what their values are, what we're going to do is going to bid the lower uh, ranking suit. What this does is gives us the opportunity uh, to bid spades if uh, we end up in a situation where we're double and we want to bid another suit. And this gives us the capability of bidding two spades at the two level. And it's a very, very minor point. But since we have, we know we have eight hearts and eight spades, we really don't care which suit is trumped. Uh, the end, uh, so we're going to pick the suit with the, the lower ranking suit if we have an equal number. Obviously, if we don't have an equal number, we would going to bid the suit with the greatest number of the major with the greatest number of cards. Let's look at this example. Okay, we're vulnerable versus vulnerable. It's on one club, two clubs. The partner says they've got five hearts and five spades. We've got, look at this, we've got six lane points. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven diamonds. Okay, we know that our partner has said they've got five spades. So five plus two is seven. Okay, but we've got seven diamonds. Now, Given a choice between a uh, uh, trump split of seven zero and five two, the seven zero is going to always be better. The only place where it becomes questionable as to which shape is best is four four compared to five three. Okay. Uh, the, the, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get. Uh, two diamonds as a sign off. You can see here, seven plus zero is equal to seven diamonds, plus five plus two equals uh, seven spades. Okay, so uh, the, always choose to suit where you know you have the greatest number of cards. All right, in this particular example here, Okay, uh, we're not vulnerable versus not vulnerable from one club, two clubs. Uh, it says that we've got five hearts, five hearts, you know, the uh, home call has five hearts and five spades. All right, we've got six lane points. Okay, max 
when we don't have six line points, we have uh, two line points. Okay, Let's fix that. Okay, we have no fit, but we've got six diamonds. All right, we've got six diamonds compared to guaranteed five hearts plus five, five plus two hearts or spades. So we know we have more hearts or spades than we can guarantee with respect to the diamond. So we're going to ignore the diamonds. And what we're going to do is give two hearts. And we're picking, the, because we have two hearts and two spades, we're picking the lower rank suit. Let's look at example number four. Okay. Uh, in this example, uh, our partner is in one spade, two spades. Our partner has shown that they've got five hearts and uh, five plus in the minor suit. Okay. Now, we've got a wonderful hand here. It's the advancer. We've got five clubs and five diamonds. We've got and since we know we're going to have a fit in one of the minors, we've, we've got a uh, great distributional hand. Okay, so we've got no heart fit. So what are we going to do? We're going to bid to no trump and say what minor. And once our partner indicates what minor is, we're going to invite them to the game. Okay, let's look at example number five. In this particular example, uh, again, we have a a, a very nice hand. This is even stronger. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've got 24 plus line points. We've got no, no heart fit. That's where our partner has indicated they've got five plus heart. We've got void spades. Okay. Uh, we're going to get it to no trump again. Once our partner indicates what minor, we're going to figure out a way to best do this line. And this last one here, uh, uh, the we our, our partner has bid one, has bid two spades, indicating five plus hearts, and uh, uh, and 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 five of the minor. Now, what we really want to find out, we've got twenty distribution points here because we know we have a fit within the, the heart suit. Okay. And so what we do is probably probably short and spade. We're going to bid four hearts. We're going to go straight to the game. Okay. Now I didn't have that in the, the, the previous set of, uh, uh, of examples, but I wanted to make make you aware that it's there. Now let's look at Michael's the the, the second bid by Michael's keeper. If the advancer made a sign off bid, and you've got a mini hand, you're going to pass. You're just never going to say anything. Okay, if you've got a maxi, you're going to make, you're going to bid your lowest, your, the, 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 make the lowest bid possible in a five plus bid suit. What this is, hey partner, I've got 16 plus points. Let's investigate further. All right, now, what happens if the advancer bids to no trump? A forcing bid saying, hey, show me, tell me more about your hand. What they want to know is where is uh, where is your shortness? Okay, and the overcaller second bid, that the the the, the, the Michael's key bidder, is going to bid three clubs with a single turn of void and clubs with three diamonds with a single turn of void and diamonds. Okay, the advance with that is going to place the contract. If it turns out that it's a low game, or that the Michaels Cubit actually has a maxi hand, 16 plus opposite uh, the advancer asking for uh, bidding to no Trump, uh, he can continue bidding or even explore slam. So that concludes the, 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 the lesson on the Michaels Cubit. Uh, it's a lot, there's, there's actually quite a bit more in it than a lot of people realize. So there's a lot of things that you can use there. I hope the lesson has been informative. Have a great day.